another tutorial. Today I'm bringing you a fun fold called a hinged closure card. And basically you have a sweet little card where the front is just a little shorter than the back and you have a piece here that acts like a little hinge to help close it, help keep it closed. It opens up like this. All right, and I created a little piece to hold it together, just like that. And I will show you how to cut down your stitch rectangles to fit this. And if you also have the stitch nested labels dies that are retired from Stampin' Up! right now, you can use those as well. I'll show you how to use those. And stay tuned to the end because I have another version where we're going to do it horizontally. And it, I think it's one of my favorites. It's really, really cute. So. Tune in and hope you like this tutorial. And if you do, please give me a thumbs up and a comment down below. I really appreciate your feedback. And you can go to stamperlorraine.com and check out um, a lot of my projects. And also you can shop through Stampin' Up! right there. And you can also sign up for my newsletter where you will receive up-to-date news and some exclusive tutorials from just from my newsletter, just for signing up. So thank you and hope you enjoyed the tutorial. <laughs> Okay, so um, basically it just has um, a little hinge on the side here and kind of closes it. Now, a lot of uh, tutorials I've seen just have it just like this and, you know, it kind of bugs me, you know, that, that it just doesn't stay closed on its own. So I put a little something here to tuck it under and I'll show a couple of different designs there that kind of helps hold it closed. Just put a little die cut on top on the dimensional dots um, and then you have room to tuck it under and so that's a hinge closure card so I'll show you quickly different ways to do that so we're starting with as you can see the front is a little shorter it's one inch shorter than the back so that's why I asked you to do five and a half by seven and a half instead of eight and a half okay so Basically, no, it's even, you could either cut the seven and a half first or um, score it first. It doesn't really matter. But I use this side to just take off the one inch after I cut my paper in half. Of course, you can use that for something else. And then score at four and a quarter. And then when you fold it, that's the base of your card. So you have the back is your normal size and the front is a little bit shorter. Okay, and burnish that with your foam folder. Okay, so now the, um, the DSP that you're going to use, I'm using the Pansy Petals. We haven't used that in a little while. And um, has some small pansies, large pansies, leaves, some graphics, gingham, stripes, dots. It's very pretty and bright and cheery. I just put some pansies out and some window boxes on my railing to my front porch. And the pansies are pretty hardy. Uh, they can withstand a little bit of frost around here anyway. So we see them in some of the gardens in the entryways to the neighborhoods. And they are out all winter sometimes. Got a little snow on them and whatever. So okay, this is in honor of the pansies on my front porch. <laughs> So the DSP is just going right on front there. Okay, so this is two and seven eighths by five and an eighth. If you want to do it um, a little bit bigger, have less of a border around here, that's fine. Whatever works proportionally, but I thought that was a good balance right there. Okay, and then your white is going to go inside, but we don't want to attach it yet because we want the end of the hinge to go underneath the inside. So there are two ways that we can do the hinge. If you have the stitched nested labels, we can use those. And if you don't, we can use rectangles. I use the stitched rectangles. That's still available in the Stampin' Up! catalog. And if you don't have that, you can always just cut a rectangle. And I'll, I'll just kind of show you the dimensions on that on a different card I have started. So for now, if you have a die cut like this, or even if you have a label die cut that has you know, something 
pretty on the end, you can use that too. So this measures approximately five inches by two and three quarters. But this, as you can tell, this could really be any width. It could be more narrow or wider, whichever, whatever works for you. It's no set way that it has to be. And you can decide how far over you want it to go also. So the length of it, again, doesn't matter a whole lot either. This one is a little bit shorter. This one is four inches total. So it all depends you know, how much you'll have flopped over the front and how much is underneath. Okay, so this is the largest stitched um, the stitch labels, and then um, you could use either the second um, largest one, or I actually experimented, and I think I liked the third largest one a little bit better to lay on top here. This one I use the reverse of the DSP, and then another label. This one I'm going to just use another white and that's where we're going to put, as you can see, I put the sentiment on there. I decided how far over I want this front hinge to go. And then I just marked with my fingernail a little bit. Okay, I want it to go right there. Then I brought out my scoring tool and I put that right in the groove and then I scored the line right there so I could get a nice fold. All right, so then we wanna do the same thing because we need to fold on this. Now you can cut it if you want, if you want a border all around, like I did with the DSP. Just left a border all around, but I'm just gonna show you another way because I like to do that just to show different options. You can actually fold this as well. So I'm going to match up the score lines. I'm going to say, okay, it's going right there. And I will score that on my score board here. Okay, and that's where that's going to go. And then I'll glue those together. Okay, that way you can see they both will have a look of wrapping around. It might create a little extra bulk back here, but um, like I said, maybe you like that look of it wrapping a little bit better. So like I said, I show different ways and See what works best for you. Maybe you have different dyes, or maybe you want to do this stitch um, piece in the DSP, in which case it would be thinner and not so much bulk when you tuck it underneath the white part of the inside of the card. Okay, so we're lining up those score lines and making sure they're Burnish nicely, you get a nice sharp fold. And I'm going to show you a couple ways of doing this as well. You can tuck it in like I did here, just around the white part. And then you see the back of the card sticking here, you have it wrapped around the white part. Or you can put it right to the edge of the back, like I'm going to do on this one. So you're going to put your adhesive, make sure it's strong, either the liquid glue or you know the tear tape, something strong, because this is an interactive thing. It's gonna be opening and closing a lot. So it'll get a lot of work. <laughs> okay. And once that's down, then we can put the white part inside there. And of course, it's fun if you want to stamp something in there. Okay, so now that covers the part in there. And to be honest, I don't feel all that much bulk. Maybe a little bit. Like if you went, if you went to write, you might you would notice it. But it really isn't that bad. So okay, so then that folds over. And if, like I said, if you didn't have something to hold it down it would start to pop up a little bit. So I like to have it hold, held down. So this is what I did. I found this um, leaf die that reminded me of the leaves that were on here. Okay, the leaf die is from the Poppy Moments. So I was looking through my embossing folders and I came across greenery. Okay, it's the thin die, uh, thin embossing folders that have these little... Um, 
leaf sprays on them or they have you know this other little one that has more of a pattern so i said oh this here i don't know uh, i don't know if you could see that so well this one seems to match up with this leaf so i said i wonder if i could just emboss that leaf and i did it didn't match up perfectly but it's going to give me the stem and some texture or hint of the veins in the leaf. So that's what I did. I put that through there, fold it up so that it matches up, run it through. So when that came out, it has a nice little, oops, nice little embossing on there, which I thought was cute. So just other ways to use the dies. Think outside the box a little bit. This stem was a little long, so I'm cutting that down. A little too pointy for my use. You can think about how you want it. You want it up, you want it down, up on the side, whatever works for you. Um, since the other leaves are facing up, I think I chose to put this one down. So I'm going to keep my dimensionals a little bit to this side, so I'm keeping that in mind. The tip of the card will fit in there either way, but I um, just want to err on the side of caution, I guess you could say. All right, so that's, the tip will kind of fit right in there. I'll take the backings off. A little piece there. And before you stick it down completely, of course, you want to kind of measure where that's going to be. And then press it down. And then your little, it's like a buckle, it can fit in there. Sometimes I think they're called a buckle card, unless I know there's a buckle card is a little bit different, but um, we'll do that another time. So then from here, we can add some embellishments, of course. Okay, so here are the in color jewels for the 2021 to 23. So we have some papaya, we have some green. Maybe I'll take the green just for some contrast. So there's some big ones and little ones. So let's try to make our triangle. Maybe one there. And I'll take another big one because there's a lot of space. One there, and then a little one. And one there. All right. So there's two different versions. One with the stitch nested labels, and just with the tri the rectangles. Now we don't have rectangles this size. So if you remember, I showed you how to cut down the rectangles. We're going to do that in a second. Okay. Going with the fresh freesia. We're going to try one horizontally. This should be this should be interesting. So I cut a piece of the rectangle already in the freesia, and I'll show you how to cut it down for the white. So it's the same process. I have um, the big rectangle, which is about three and an eighth by four and a half. As you can see, I cut the freesia with that. And now I took a size smaller. I'm going to cut a piece of white with that one. Okay, much easier if you run these through on an angle where the point will go in first. It kind of eases into the rollers and you don't have to force it so much. Okay, so I punched out my white rectangle that I'm going to stamp on. I have a little bit of a border there, but maybe I want to make it um, just a little thinner. So I'll show you. See, this is a little wide, so I want to make them just a little bit more narrow to look, I don't know, just a little more, bit more dainty perhaps. So basically you want to keep the length. So we're just going to move this over a little bit. I took off about a half an inch when I did the first card and you can feel those little nubs fitting into where the stitching is. Okay, so that you know you're sort of in the right spot. Okay, and what's nice about the this these um, stitch rectangles is there's 
when you die cut, they're stitching on the inside and the outside. So this is really neat because when I cut this out, I made this part smaller, but the piece I'm left also has stitching on the outside. So now this is ready to go for something else because there's two rows of stitching on those dies. So that's, that's a really neat way to do that. So now I want to make this one just a little bit smaller. So I will just kind of measure where I want it to be, figure out how much border you want. Let's go a little, want some of that fresh freezer to show. So I will take off, you can just kind of measure right here with your die. And remember this part's not going to be seen because that's tucked in. So you want this amount and this amount to be equal. And then we're going to cut it so that this part is pretty equal as well. So I think that's about it here. I'll hold that in place and run that through the machine. Okay, so I put a little piece of washi there to hold it right where I wanted it to be so it wouldn't slip. And my washi tape I keep using over and over again so it's not so sticky. I put my fingers all over it so that um, it takes some of the stickiness off and it's not going to ruin the, the paper that's I'm die cutting there. So now I've made that more narrow and you can put it on there like that. Stamp something on there. Now if we're going to do this horizontally, you can do it um, different ways. You can do it this way. We'll have the hinge coming up. Or you can do it this way and it kind of looks like a purse if you have the hinge coming down here. So that would be really kind of cute, right? So I figured, well, I'll do some each way and we'll see how that goes. I have my stamp ready to go. We're going to put the sentiment vertically this time. So let me just stamp that in black. This is wishing you a little happiness just because you're you. Question is gonna get it straight. Woo, not too bad. Okay, we'll glue that together real fast. And we're going to put a closure, one of my favorite closures, is this um, from the Stitch So Sweetly, that little tiny piece. We're gonna tuck the, the hinge right in that. All right, now let's see how far up we want that to go. And we'll have this, this little piece up here. So you can just kind of measure, depending on your sentiment and what you wanna put on here. Um, so I'm going to score right about here. So I make a little mark with my fingernail, bring in the scoring blade, and because I'm going through two pieces, I went pretty heavy on that. Burnish it down. I thought it would look really cute the other way, looking like a purse, right? All right, so then we're gonna glue this down here. You know, for this, I might use the tear tape just because I don't have to wait for the glue to dry then. And I'll show you how to use the tear tape if you're not familiar with it. Just roll it off. I'm going to put three because it's a little heavy and I don't know, I just don't want it to fall apart. How embarrassing, right guys? We've had those done before. <laughs> Okay, then you just peel off the top. And it's really sticky. This is great for your 3D projects as well. Okay, the bad part is once it's down, it's down. At least with the liquid glue, you can have a little bit of wiggle room to make sure it's straight. So I'm going to use my top grid here. I've shown you that before. I'm going to center this to two and three quarters on each side and because I want this right in the center I have zero marking here and I will center this using the grid marks on top so 
my white piece I can see is just within the one inch marks. I have to get right over the top. Okay, there we go. So now I know I'm centered. We'll put this on the inside. Squiggle, squiggle. Okay, and of course we could put something there. This goes up on the dimensional dots. I'm going to put two minis instead of a big one. Actually, I might put three minis. Use my take your pick tool, get those minis up. One. Two, and if you want, you can err on the side of being a little high, which I didn't think too much of. I'll move this one up a little bit so that my flap can tuck under there. And then just measure where that's going to be. Oh, dimensional dot backing, have them all over the place, right? So I'm feeling where those are. I'm not going to go directly on top because I don't want it to get sticky. So I'm going to just kind of get an idea. Right underneath those points is a good, good place for it to be. Okay. Then, of course, I just think that needed a pearl. So we're going to put a little pearl on there. I haven't used pearls a lot lately. They have all the rage at one point. But this is just so feminine and that paper just looks kind of vintage to me. So I thought that's really pretty. And maybe I'd put a little something else down here. Oh, I was thinking of ribbon. So I have we have the uh, Fresh Freesia Open Weave Ribbon. Let's tie a little bow down here, make it real fancy, real feminine. There we go. See, I forgot what I was thinking about. So many options. Okay, because I want my bow to be horizontal, I'm wrapping around clockwise. I want it to be even with where it wraps around first. So I'll bring that down a little bit, trim it even. Look how sweet that is. Oh my gosh, I like it. All right, so there are all of our versions. Fun. So, hope you like that.